Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in the previous video we took a look at Blazor's authentication support. In this video we'll take a look at Blazor's authorization capabilities. Just to recap, authentication is the action of using credentials to essentially log into the system, while authorization is the action of knowing what actions a user is allowed to do. It is basically permissions. Since our Blazor application is an ASP donor core application, we will use identities functionality because it's built in into the system already. In this video, I won't be going through identity and how to set this up in depth because I've already covered this as part of my REST API series and you can find those videos in the description down below in the top right corner of your screen right now. There are generally four ways to identify authorization status in Blazor. Whether the user is just authenticated, so if they're logged in or not. Whether the user is in a role, if the user has a claim or if a policy is satisfied. We're going to take a look at all of those right now in our code. This video is part of my Blazor series, so if you want to make sure you don't miss any episodes, please subscribe or ring the sub notification bell to get notifications of new episodes. So this is where we left it off. In the previous video, we have the authorization root view in the router on the app.razor file. What I want to do is I want to go to the pages and I'm going to create a new page now. So I'm going to copy a random one and I'm going to just create a duplicate and I'm going to say auth uh, example or auth examples maybe. Yeah, that's fine. And um, let me just change this to authentication authorization examples and change that to auth test and completely delete that. So new Razor component, which is a page component. And now I can go to my shared folder, find the nav menu, and I'm going to add a new nav link down below, which is going to be the, uh, the page just created. So, off example, and then change the link to be what did I name it? Off test. Yeah, that's fine. So now we have our component and we have our navigation. What I want to do now is start adding some stuff. So everything begins in authorization and views with authorize view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an authorize view component. And in here, I can use three other subcomponents: the authorized, the authorizing, and the not authorized. So what I want to create is the authorized one to say that if the user is authorized, then they can see anything in here. And I'm just going to put a, a header attribute, probably and change this to an H2. And I'm going to say that you can only see this if you're logged in and i'm actually gonna make the whole page only accessible if you logged in by adding an attribute here which is the authorize attribute now the cool thing about this is that if i copy this and i create other authorized views here the authorized view component can have some parameters set. Those are the policy and the roles. Let's just look at the policy first. A policy in ASP Nora Core Identity is a combination of conditions that are satisfied. In this scenario, I'm going to create a policy called is admin. And I will say that you can only see this if your email ends with at admin and I have to escape this with double at and the last thing I want to do is I'm going to create another authorized view here and instead of policy I'm going to use roles and now this is proven that's because we can actually have multiple roles here so you can if you have something pre-created you can use that I have a role pre-created called secret role but if you had another one you could just say another role yada 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 you get the point and then you can only see this if you are part of the secret role. So now I have this page, which is the auth examples page accessible here. You need to be authorized to see it. And if you have a policy called is admin, if you satisfy that, then you will see this section. If you are also in a secret role, you will see this section. Now let's do some setup for our identity because I haven't actually done this yet. So let's go to the startup and what we need to do is go to the services and in here where we set up our identity, the, the default identity from the previous video, 
I can actually say add roles here and I will use the default identity role. So this registers a bunch of services and the role itself in the DI container. And the other thing I need to do is about here, I'll say services.add authorization. And then I'm going to configure some options and those options will be this uh, policy called is admin. So what I really want to check is if the email of the user is ending with at admin.com. So I'm going to say options dot add policy and then the name of the policy is admin and then comma. I'm not going to name this policy uh, options again. I'm going to name this policy now and I'm going to say policy. Let me just make it a new line so you can see it. Policy dot add requirements and I'm going to create a new requirement and I'm going to show you what this requirement is, but uh, I'm going to name this email requirement and the requirement will be the email should end with admin.com. So let's create this class. I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to name it authorization. And in here, I'm going to create this email requirement class. I'm going to make a property called email suffix. That's not how you spell suffix. And then I'm going to remove the setter and I'm going to initialize that from the constructor because I want it to be immutable. So string email suffix and then email suffix equals email suffix. So now I do have my requirement. Of course, this is not a valid requirement unless I implement the I authorization requirement interface. So now I have a registrable requirement and you can see in the startup, if I import it, it should accept it as a requirement. So I have my policy set up, but I also need another thing. What I need is an authorization handler. So let's make that here. It's going to be the email of handler. And what it needs to do is it needs to extend the authorization handler class. And we're going to put a requirement here. So email requirement is the generic T type parameter. And we're going to implement the missing members. And it's going to be a method called handler requirements async. And as you can see, it has the authorization handler context and the requirement itself. And the code in here is very easy. I just want to check that the user for the specific context has an email that ends with a admin.com. So if context dot user and the user is accessible here, so you can get your, the claims, the identity, everything. I'm just going to say identity dot name. The name is the email in our application dot ends with and then requirement dot the specified suffix, then context dot succeed requirement and we're going to say that this requirement was successful and we can just return here the task dot completed task the last thing we need to do is we need to register that handler here as a singleton so add singleton email auth handler and uh, i think there's an interface that we need to use here i think it's the i authorization handler so let me just do that and that should be all we need so now we have our policy and I have pre-created a few emails that actually satisfy these conditions. So all I need to do is actually just run this and show you what it looks like in the front end. So our application is here. And if I go to the auth example, sorry, you cannot see this. That's because I'm not actually logged in. But if I go to the login page and I say nick at test.com, I think that's the standard that doesn't have any roles or any claims or any policies. Then if I log in there, I should be able to see this and I can only see this because I'm logged in. If you can see in the code, however, we still have two other authorized views here that I don't satisfy the conditions for. So I do not see them. That's how you can be in a page and just hide some stuff from people that don't have the permission to see them. That's authorization. Now, if I log out and I go and log in again, I can use the random at test.com. And then if I log in with that, this account actually has the secret role. So it's part of the secret role. So if I go here, I can see that hey, you can see this because you're logged in. Yes. And you can also see this because you're part of the secret role, which is awesome because now we know that our role, which is attached to this user is actually satisfied. Again, we only see this and this, 
because these are the conditions that are satisfied. If you actually wanted to show something, if this one isn't satisfied, you can go here and say not authorized and let me show that in action. I'm just going to copy an H2 and say only admins can see this. So if I restart the application and I run it again, I'm going to log in with the exact same user to show you how this makes a difference. So now I'm refreshing the same page. Only admins can see this. That's because instead of being authorized, because it's not, it's falling back to the not authorized tag. The, the last tag I want to show you is the authorizing. And this is only uh, actually visible if you're doing some sort of uh, asynchronous logging in or asynchronous authorization. So if the user is being authorized as the page is loading or some action is being taken, you can actually put stuff there and they will see it um, during this small amount of time. And the last thing I want to show you is if, if I log out with this and I log in again, I should be able to say nick at admin.com. I think this account exists. Yeah, it does. And now I should actually be able to see in the auth example that you can see this because your email ends with admin. So we're satisfying the policy and that's why we're seeing this. So these are all the three general ways you can do this. Now you can use claims in your policies if you want to. You can use any sort of stuff. You can have a combination of handlers and you can even have authorization on the very top level. So the authorized attribute, we can have authorized authentication schemes, policies and roles. So again, you can do policy equals is admin and then the whole page is visible if this is satisfied. The last thing I want to mention is um, if I go in the startup, I can actually show you in this server authentication state provider if I decompile it and see what's in, in there, that the base class the authentication state provider has an event called authentication state has changed. And this event can be invoked when again, the authentication state is changed, which, which means that you can act upon permissions being added or removed or login or log out as the person is seeing the page. So imagine somebody hacked into somebody's account and you want to make them instantly stop doing what they're doing. You can remove permissions. This can be invoked and then you can handle it, but you have to write your own implementation of this. On the topic of auth, if I remove the policy specification here, down here, you can actually have a code block. And in this code block, you can do several interesting things. You can essentially have procedural authorization logic, which means that because in your app Razor you're using authorized root view, you can go here and say cascading parameter. And then this parameter will be a task of type authentication state like here and then that's the auth state task so that's it and then if i override the on on after render async one then say if first render and look what i can actually do i can get the state so state equals await the auth state task and of course, I have to make this an async, that's fine. And then using this state, I can get the user. And then I can, I can have access to the claims or the identity or, or all that. What's also very interesting is that can, I can actually inject up here the I authorization service. This is another Blazor uh, service. And if I copy this, Let's see what's here. The things I can do are the following. I can say authorization service dot authorize async. And if you see this method with its overloads, it accepts the, the claims uh, principle, which can be uh, retrieved by the state. So I can get the user essentially by doing state dot user. And then what I can do is I can say user coma, and then this accepts uh, authorization requirements, authorization policy, um, custom policy names. So I could say if user is admin here, if I awaited and say user is user admin equals this, and I can check whether the user is an admin or not. 
in a code block or in the code behind. And then I can say if user is admin dot succeeded, which means that the user actually satisfies this authorization check, which means they are in the policy, then console dot write line, hey, your and admin. And with this type of thing, sky is the limit. You can take this as far as you want. You have access to the code, to the state. You have a bunch of uh, components you can use and you can combine them to provide very granular authorization in your application. I think this is a great implementation from Blazor's part. And uh, this is all you need to know basically to just dive right in and make your own authorization stuff. That's all I had for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.